Hi everyone, welcome to Rockfish Farm. Today I'm going to do a Q&A from all of our January videos. So these are all the questions that were left either on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram for me. They're ones that I want to be able to answer a little bit more in depth for you. And uh, I just felt like I couldn't give you a good enough answer by typing it out. So here we go. Question number one comes from Heather Ferguson. And she says, I've had so much trouble with corn. I can never get it with full cobs. I get about half an ear. We are in different zones as I'm in South Florida. So when you're not getting a full ear, this is a pollination issue. And so number one, you can look at the variety of the corn that you're planting. Um, you know, I've had better success with different varieties of plants than I have others. Uh, but the other thing that you want to look at is the way that you are planting this corn. So when you plant in corn, when you're planting corn, you want to make sure that you're planting in blocks. So your rows and your blocks need to be at least four foot wide. So this is why I do square foot gardening method and my beds are about four feet wide. And so I'm planting it up very, very heavily. And so that way when the wind blows and all of the pollen, you know, you can see it kind of looks like little powder coming from those little tassels. All the, um, the pollen from the tassels, it falls down onto the silks. And if each of those silks are not getting pollinated, then that will not produce full ears for you. So you want to make sure instead of planting just in a single row or two rows, you want to be able to do those in blocks so that when it does fall, it's falling and has a better chance to get on all of those silks. So check the way you're planting it. And I uh, hope that helps. So the next question uh, or comment, I should say, comes from the Ivy Bend Garden. And this is from one of the cooking videos. And it says, love the video, but wondering if you are wearing a microphone or talking loudly into the camera. I asked because there is an echo and sometimes hard for me to hear what you were saying when you were in the kitchen, when you were outside, your voice is clear. And I wanted to address this because I do know that this is happening and I'm working on it. So hang in there with me. My ceilings in my kitchen are very, very tall. That's why I came upstairs here to do this video in hopes that it is not quite so echoey. But um, I do project my voice just because I used to not wear a microphone. Uh, so I am starting to get used to that as well. But my ceilings in my kitchen are very, very tall. So I'm trying to research ways um, to drown out that echo a little bit. So stick with me. Hopefully it'll get better here soon. Okay, KJ says, at what temps would be okay to plant cool loving veg? Uh, looking to do a garden tower. I live in 4B, so I know I have to wait a while. So it depends, and it depends on what you want to do. So uh, on the back of all of the seed packets, it tells you what temperature those seeds germinate best at. So you can go through all of the cool season uh, vegetables that you would like to grow and see what those temperatures are. The ground temperature is usually going to be maybe about 10 degrees less than what the air temperature is. But if you're going to do a row cover like I did in one of my recent videos, you can get, you can gain like 10 to 15 degrees on the outside air temperature. And, um, and so you can gauge that by the back of the packet, but you can also do different weights of fabric. And so if you want to do almost something like a heavy plastic, that almost becomes like a greenhouse effect inside of your raised beds like I did, or even on the ground, and you can gain like 30 degrees or so. So look into different types of row covers and then look into the seeds that you want to grow and look at the back of the packets. And depending on what type of row cover you want to use, or if you want to use any at all, you can go by those temperatures and add either 10 to 15 or 30 degrees to the back of those to see when you can start it. So I actually planted our uh, raised beds, you know, a couple weeks ago, and I just went out and checked it. And I'm going to do an update video with y'all here soon, but um, everything's starting to come up. So it's, it's definitely doing well out there. Uh, so those row covers work. So it just kind of depends if you're ready to get going. I mean, you know, it can be snowing outside and you, you can have cool season vegetables growing under those row covers, almost like a greenhouse in there. So do a little research on that, see what you want to start and what time, and you can probably do it. Okay, Vanessa Hunter, she says, I'm in a similar climate and haven't been successful with raised beds because of ants. When they're not stinging, they're eating the roots of the baby plants. I've tried everything and nothing has worked. Has anyone got a tried and true method of discouraging ants? And so I talked with her just a little bit. Um, there was one other thing. 
we talked about diatomaceous earth. Um, that is one of my plan of attacks for this year for like squash bugs and things like that. I'll talk about that in a minute with one of the other questions, but you know, that may work for ants. And I think she said that that did work. It just kind of put them elsewhere. I'm kind of wondering if you put it around the base of each plant, but then also maybe around your, the edges of your raised beds too, so that they're not even maybe getting up into that. There was something else I saw online, Dr. Earth, I think it was what it's called, and it's for organic gardening. Um, and that was one of the first things that popped up. I'd be wondering if uh, you have tried that yet. Um, that'd be something that I would probably try just to see if you can take care and get rid of those ants. The other thing that you might could try is see which plants they're going to and maybe make them a separate planter elsewhere in the garden and let them just have at those plants. And maybe they'll go to all of that, kind of like a host plant and let them go to that. And then maybe they'll leave everything else in your garden alone. Hopefully that helps. I know that sometimes pests are just like, you know, they're just, it's a pain. And, you know, the other thing that you could try would almost be like a uh, fabric that is meant to deter pests. There are some on gardener supply website. Uh, they're like a tiny mesh netting. I think I'm going to use them for the um, beetles, the Japanese beetles this year, because they, nothing works against those. I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as you are with these ants, these Japanese beetles. I just can't keep them off of like my grapevines and um, uh, my roses, really. So I think this year I'm going to use a, a netting uh, to keep during that time to kind of keep them off of there. So Maybe you could try some of those things if you haven't already. Okay, and three, Jackie Sill. Uh, she says, this is on the um, Cooking with Herbs video. It says, good morning, I'm new to your channel and I really enjoy your videos. Question, what brand was that blender that you used to crush your herbs? That was actually a baby, um, a baby food processor, uh, like a baby Breva or um like a bullet. It's almost like a bullet. Um, that would be the most similar thing to what I use. It's pretty old. Um, I use those to make my uh, children's baby food when they were younger and I just keep it to chop herbs and onions or small batch things like that. Okay. And then we have a question from the barn tour video and I can't wait to do another one of these because they are down there right now and they're installing all of the electrical right now. They're starting on it anyways. So I'm hoping we'll have a little bit of lights by the end of the day today. And then all we have left is the tack room. But on the barn tour video, we have a question from Jessica Lee. She says, thanks for so much for posting this. I am also contemplating placing my stall order from Stallworks. Do you know if this is the four inch on center or three inch on center bar spacing? Any more info on how you're liking them or advice is appreciated. So working with Stallworks, they're here out of Virginia. They were amazing. I mean, I, I would order more from them. Um, they were really great to work with. Kelsey is in the office and, you know, answered any questions. I had a long list of questions. Um, and, you know, even up to like delivery, I mean, they came a little earlier than what was expected. I mean, just everything was really great with them. And their prices were very competitive to other places that I called. In fact, they were probably more on the low end, um, but everything came perfect and with great instructions. And I mean, it went up easy. We're very, very happy with it. They are, I believe, the four inch on center spacing bars. We did the feed openings and then just closed regular stall doors with, with the bars. Uh, but yes, we, we are loving the stalls and love the company that we work with. And um, I would highly recommend them. I think you'll be very happy working with them. Okay, this was a question on the unboxing, a bunch of new garden uh, goodies for 2023. This is from In the Garden. Everything is going to look so pretty this spring and summer. Do you m r mind referring the person who did your fencing? Uh, keep us informed about the toolbox attached to the raised bed. Thanks for sharing. Uh, my husband and I, we actually did the fencing ourselves and we are not for hire. <laughs> not for hire. <laughs> we still have uh, lots of fencing to put up here. And um, it was, it's very rewarding and it's really not that hard. Um, you know, of course, we had to get our own uh, tractor attachment, the uh, post hole digger. And in fact, when we go to put in um, the next set of fencing, down our driveway is incredibly packed dirt. And that's where we're getting ready to uh, put in the next set of fencing for the front pasture. 
And we are actually going to rent a, I guess, an excavator with the post hole digger on the front. We did that for the barn because they had to be a certain hole size. Uh, we're building the barns ourselves too. But we are actually going to rent that again because that thing, I mean, we've got very hard clay here. And the tractor, while it worked, it took forever just because we don't have the downforce uh, from the tractor. So renting the excavator, I mean, it like does holes. It like, bzz, bzz. I mean, it, it is super quick. So it's going to be worth the money um, to, to rent that, to be able to knock out that fence very quickly. But once you get rolling with it, and maybe we can do a fencing video to show you like the height that we did it. We did the four board fencing and, um, you know, I, I honestly, I can't imagine how much it would cost to pay somebody to do that because, uh, it was incredibly expensive for us to do it ourselves. Um, but it, it's worth it and it's not hard. I mean, him and I, we, we got out there and we did it. I think the hardest thing is having kids and, uh, having to like, switch between, you know, a full day's work of fencing and then coming in and making dinner and all that kind of stuff. My parents came over a lot and helped watch the kids while we went out there and worked. And, um, but totally worth it. Totally worth it. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. And then Cheryl Spate says, please share your plan of attack for squash bugs. They destroy our squash every single year. And yes, yes, they do. They are probably one of my worst pet, pet pets. They are not pets. Pests in the garden. I mean, they are, they're horrific. Um, and I don't want to use anything harsh. That's not like organic. My plan of attack, I've read a lot on diatomaceous earth and diatomaceous earth, the food grain is, uh, apparently works very well against squash bugs. And so what it does is it like attaches to their back and puts little scratches in their back, which ultimately kills them. So that's what I'm planning on doing this year. And I'm going to be going out. They get my squash, my zucchini, melons, and my pumpkins. I love growing pumpkins. I planted 144 pumpkin seeds last year. And I think I got two tiny little pumpkins out of it. And I said, you know what? Not this year. This year, I'm going out there every three days. And I'm going to be sprinkling with more diatomaceous earth. I'm going to use the... Um, Captain Jack's uh, dead bug brew. I had to think of the name of it there for a minute, but the dead bug, br dead bug brew. I'm going to be using that on there. And that is an organic product as well. I use that on everything in my garden and it works really well on a lot of stuff except for those squash bugs. Um, but every three days I'm going to be out there. And if it does get bad to the point, um, I said to myself this year, just because they are pumpkins and they are away from my raised beds. And, uh, you know, I know some people won't agree with this, but I will plan on using something stronger if I need to, if I get out there. But I'm also, I'm hoping I don't have to get to that point. Um, but uh, I do also plan on using those row covers, those uh, bug, they have them on Gardener Supply. They're like a thin mesh netting to where pests cannot get through them. And so I'm hoping to also cover them when I, if I start noticing them, I'm going to start covering them uh, with that and just getting out there, hand picking. If you can get them under control before they lay the eggs. And I think the easiest way to do that is put your eyes on your plants every single day. If you go out there and look at them every single day, you will be able to catch them before they do that. And sprinkle that diatomaceous earth, get as many off of there as you can. Of course, if you have this huge pumpkin patch, you know, um, I plan on doing, you know, about the same as I did last year. And, but I'm just going to stay on top of it, especially when I know they're coming, when they start setting those flowers, it seems is like when they start rolling in. And, um, so diatomaceous earth and the, uh, row covers that mesh netting, it, that's my plan of attack for the squash bugs this year. And hopefully going to have those under control. I had one last question from Brooks Benedict on Instagram, and she had a question of, can she use her seeds that she saved from last year? The short answer is yes. The long answer is yes, but um, you need to make sure that you're uh, saving your seeds in a way that will allow them to be viable for the next year. So I store mine in a dark can. You remember those old Charles chip cans? Um, 
I, my grandmother used to always have one of those and we ended up finding one from somewhere uh, several years back. But anyway, I keep all of my seeds in that and it's in a cool place. Uh, so they stay dark in their packets. Um, now you can store them like in the freezer, I think is, I've heard you can do that and keep them like in your cool basement. Uh, just don't let light to them. Water obviously uh, keeps them viable. Now, what what's going to happen from year to year is that, uh, you know, the seed viability will go down. So like if your germination rate is 100%, you know, the first year it might only be, let's say 90%. I don't, I don't know. But, you know, you're not going to have as many seeds maybe sprout the second year, third year, fourth year. You can save them for like actually several years. But when I get into that maybe third and fourth season, I'm planting more seeds from the start just because I'm expecting that germination rate not to be quite as high and like all of them not sprout. I'm not going to say they're not going to because you know what? There's plenty of things that probably will be just fine after several years to plant. So I'd say plant them, try it. And if they come up, great. You know what? And um, and then just plan. Just try to plan. I, I would say if you feel like you haven't stored them very well um, or if they're several years old, plant a few extra than what you need just to make sure that everything comes up or be on top of watching it. And as soon as it doesn't sprout, go ahead and put that next one in. Well, that is all for the January videos. Thank you all for watching. I've had a lot of fun doing these and we have a lot more to come. I, I'm like so ready to get my hands in the dirt and the sun to shine. It's been raining like crazy here. And I know a lot of places it has. We haven't seen a lick of snow this year, not even a single flurry. And it's kind of depressing because I really like the snow. We usually get at least one or two good ones um, every winter, but it doesn't look like we're going to get anything this year. So I've been out working and getting ready and I still need to order my plants. I, I don't even, I've ordered all my seeds and they're here. I'm getting ready to start them too. Uh, but I need to get my plant order ready so that I don't have to travel around to all these places in the spring. And, um, but yeah, so I'm excited. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.